If you're a Dollar Tree DIY fan, then you're gonna enjoy this project because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make a medicine cabinet using Dollar Tree items. If you wanna learn how to do it, well, then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. The project tonight, the little medicine cabinet, it's a versatile project because it doesn't necessarily have to be a medicine cabinet, though I'm using mine to put essential oils in, and all those little bottles that are just sitting around. You may have little things that you need to kind of get up off your counter space, but it can also be laid down on its back and used as a storage box, a jewelry box. Really cool, very elegant. I did a little more of the glam version of it, but you may want to do a farmhouse version, and I did offer suggestions in this video on how you can do that too. But before we get to it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right down there below to join the Glue Dot family. And when you hit the bell next to it, it will hopefully inform you every time I upload a new video. Let me know also down below any comments if you like the glam version better or the farmhouse or what style you would do, how you would change it. I'm always fascinated here and I learned so much from all of you as well. If you like this project, Give me a thumbs up, let me know. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm good with that, I'm secure in myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, don't forget to please look down in that description box. There's lots of great information down there, like how to enter to win our Bling Owl keychain. I do that drawing the first of every month, as well as a live chat, which it's a lot of fun actually. I think it is anyway. <laughs> and, you can also find contact information for me if you need to get a hold of me, send me pictures of some of the projects you've made, or you just want to say hi. Either way, it's all good. So without further ado, let's get to this project. The first thing I'm gonna do to get started is take the glass out of my two frames here. So if you kind of um, press on these, the two that I bought are actually already kind of loose. They didn't get glued in well. So it shouldn't be a problem to get these out. And the way I'm gonna be doing that is flipping to the back side and using my X-Acto knife and then cutting out some of their hot glue that they've put in. now. This one kind of got onto the glass, so I'm just gonna see if I can, yeah, I'm actually able to just pull that away. So you can kind of use something to get in there and help you pull that hot glue that is from the factory away. That would be great. If not, kind of just try cutting a little bit around it, sort of scoring it. Try and be careful not to cut your frame. And we're just gonna work on that and get this glass out of there. And we're gonna do this on both of our frames, removing both glass and just leaving the frames. Now you may have to kind of be really careful when you're doing this so you don't cut yourself, if that, so you don't want that glass to break. There we go. And set aside the glass and we're gonna get back to that shortly. I'm gonna get the other one done and I'll be right back. Okay, the next thing, I, I went ahead and cleaned out any extra glue out of, now this one came out so much easier than the first one. Once I really got in there and got the glue out, the piece of glass came right out with a lot more ease than the first one did. So some might be easier than others. So what I'm gonna do now is actually take one of my pieces of glass. I'm actually gonna go ahead and cover the back piece with contact paper. So go ahead and, now if you don't wanna do it with contact paper, that's perfectly fine. What my original plan was gonna be is to just spray paint this piece white. So this is gonna be the back of our little um, cabinet. So I think it'll look really cool with the contact paper. It will look really cool with it white. So whatever you choose to do, using the contact paper, just make this glass a little more stable and less likely to break. So I'm gonna be cutting a piece of this and applying it directly onto the glass. And as you apply it, just work out the bubbles as best you can. But remember too, don't forget these edges are glass, so be careful when you're rubbing that you don't end up slicing your finger on that edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover both sides of this and then we'll go on to the next step. 
So instead of actually cutting your contact paper the exact size of the glass, I'm just gonna tell you for learning, again, from my mistakes, cut it a little bigger. It's super easy once you get it on there to go over the edges with your X-Acto knife and it really easily um, trims off the extra. Now you're gonna take one of your frames and you're gonna flip it to the right side facing you, the correct side meaning, and then you're gonna take your piece of glass that's either been spray painted or put uh, contact paper on, and we're gonna be gluing that to the back side, well, back side of our box, but the front side of the frame. I hope that's making sense to you, the good side of the frame. So go around and add your hot glue. Try and work a little quickly so it doesn't dry, and you don't need a whole lot of it because these pictures, this glass really sticks well. But try and keep it as close to your edge as possible because there's not a whole lot of overhang with this glass here. And try and get it in place right from the get-go because there's no working time to move it. So here we go. So that's what it's gonna look like from the back. If you're worried about this edge, I would go around and either add some hot glue or what we can do afterwards is we can go ahead and add a little bit of ribbon on there just to make sure that edge is not sharp or anything, but it will be on the back side of your cabinet. Now we're gonna take the stir stick. Now this is the five gallon stir stick. So just to give you kind of a reference, the regular stir sticks are these. So they're much narrower and much shorter as well. So I'm gonna use the five gallon stir stick and I got this from Home Depot. And what we're gonna be doing at this point is measuring our shelves. Now what's cool about this, since it's actually a measuring stick as well, you can figure out exactly the size of your, um, these are gonna be our shelves. So measure from the inside of your frame here and to the inside of the other side of the frame, and it comes exactly to seven inches on the inside. So you know that old adage, measure twice, cut once? Well, I guess that's not me, because I measured once and cut, and it was too big. So off camera, I went and had my husband cut more because I measured again, and so I thought that would be perfect. So that's measuring twice, and cutting twice, and then came inside and started laughing at myself because now it's too short. So, measure three times, cut three times, and three's the charm. <laughs> so, what you wanna do is have your pieces not measure seven inches, and not measure six and an eighth inches, but actually measuring six and nine sixteenths. So, it may vary depending on your frame, but that should be the right measurement if you are doing the frames that I got. So just double check, so six and nine sixteenths is the size that should fit right inside the inner lip down below there, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'm gonna be using a cutting board here and an X-Acto knife, and I'm gonna be cutting this stir stick right at the seven inch mark. Now if you have access to a saw or somebody that can cut it for you, even better. I'm trying to do this in such a way that all of you can do it. And so, let's see, it's not probably the easiest way to go, but you're gonna just keep cutting through with your X-Acto knife until you make enough of a score that you can break it. But I would just keep going, keep going. I may break down actually. <laughs> and have my husband cut this for me. That's what I'm gonna do, but anyway, you can keep scoring. I will do one of them scored, just so you guys can, so I know what I'm telling you to do and how that works. Um, you're gonna need three, so go ahead and get those cut, and then we will be back. Okay, so I've been working on this for a bit. I flipped it over. I'm also scoring the back side. So I've got both sides scored, and I'm gonna try breaking this. now. To be honest with you, my hand is killing me and I'm working on the first one, so it's really not probably the best option. Um, I'm gonna put it on the end of my counter here and just pray. And, oh, that's not so bad. It broke off pretty well. So I'm just gonna clean up those other edges, but balsa wood is a much better option and then I'm gonna go have my husband cut me the other two pieces because I don't have time to go get balsa wood and still get this video done for you. <laughs> so here are my three pieces. The ends are a little bit rough. So I actually, I'm gonna take a little piece of sandpaper 
and just, uh, it's actually kind of a rough piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna sand off some of those little rough edges to the wood. So you don't have to be super careful about it, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we just wanna make sure that our pieces fit within the frame here. So go ahead and do that with each one. So, this so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be covering these pieces with some of my leftover scraps of contact paper. Now, if you would like to, you can just go ahead and skip this part and paint your shelves, or you can use decorative paper. If you maybe have some scrapbooking paper that you wanna use, you can do that as well. You don't have to use contact paper. You don't have to spend any other money if you don't want to. So, so now that I have my pieces cut and they're actually the right length, <laughs> I'm gonna put those aside for a minute and I want to take apart this other top frame that we have. This is actually going to be the door to our cabinet. And so what we're going to need to do is remove all of the goodies from it. And while we're working on the rest of the project, we're going to spray paint this piece of glass with, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this frosted glass spray and I'm going to just do that because I don't want my cabinet to be see-through. You may not want to have a frosted look, so you can always just leave yours plain glass so you can see right into your cabinet. Another option is there is contact paper that is like frosted contact looking paper, so you can just put that on and it gives a similar effect to what this frosted glass is gonna do. The frosted glass is not as frosted as the frosted contact paper, so that's another thing. The other option too, if you don't want it to be see-through at all, you can either, again, use your contact paper and cover it, the, you know, the regular marbly or whatever style you want, or you can just spray paint it a solid color. So it's up to you entirely, your choice. I'm gonna go get this sprayed and let it dry, and while it's drying, I'm gonna work on the next step. Okay, while that's drying, we're gonna take our shelves that we made and we're gonna figure out where exactly we want to place our shelves. So think about what you wanna be putting on your shelves as to how far apart you want them, or if you even want three shelves, you don't have to do three, you can do two if you have items that are gonna require a little more height. I would like to do um, essential oil bottles, so I'm gonna put them spaced so that an essential oil bottle would fit in. And then actually what I'm gonna do is for the bottom, I'm putting it all the way down to the bottom and I'm just gonna glue it on there so there's a nice good flat surface because the surface in here has that little lip and things would not actually be able to stand on it. Once you get the shelves in place exactly where you want them, take some kind of a marker or a pen or something. Actually, it's a really good idea to use a level. I got this one from Dollar Tree. Stand this up, make sure your shelves are level because that'll kind of be a drag. You get them all glued in and they're crooked. Um, and then what I'm just doing is take a pen and go through and make a mark underneath so you know exactly where your shelves are gonna be glued once you pull them out so that you can put that glue behind them. I'm gonna go ahead and Put the glue on the back side of my shelf and then glue it directly down onto the backing. Now for the most part, these shelves are pretty sturdy. They're not really meant to hold anything really heavy. Um, I think for a few essential oil bottles, it should hold fine. And if you have some light little things there, they're pretty sturdy. But just if you wanna be really, really extra secure about it, you can take popsicle sticks or these, I love these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. The pack has, I don't know how many, a lot in it. And I've used them for a lot of projects. It's got 45 in there and they're really great. So what I'm gonna do for mine, just to be a little extra secure, is measure from in between. So I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces and glue them together and then put those in between just to hold my shelves in place, give them a little extra security there um, in case they need it. So the way I did that is went ahead and measured from the bottom of the shelf there to the top of your shelf there and make a marking so that you know exactly where you're gonna be cutting them. And you're gonna do two pieces the same and glue them together. I used my X-Acto knife 
and I just did a score on it until it actually cuts either all the way through or almost all the way through. So this actually is what we were trying to do initially with the, um, the stir sticks, but those darn stir sticks, they're really hard wood and they're really thick. So that didn't work all that well. Then what you wanna do is go back and forth and snap it away. And then if there's any little tiny um, slivers or anything sticking out, you can just kind of clean them off with your X-Acto knife. So we're gonna go ahead and do that over here as well and cut our pieces to the length we need. And then glue your two pieces together. And this way they make something a little bit thicker. Now, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of doing that, while you're cutting your big paint stirrer stick, you can plan ahead and get another paint stirrer stick and use that to be supports for your sides. Or the other thing is you may wanna use those supports. Maybe you want dividers uh, for something, you know, have one in the center or whatever, that's also another option. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these with contact paper and then I will be gluing them into place as support. In. I'm gonna go ahead and add my hot glue here and then add in my little shelf support. Make sure your shelf support is actually supporting your shelves and not just <laughs> pushed up against the side here. And go get those all glued in and then we're gonna put the next piece on the top. You can do another set of the little side supports just for the aesthetics of it, for the top part. I'm not going to because I wanna be done with this already. <laughs> um, so now what we're gonna do is take our other frame that's just like the bottom one and we're gonna be gluing it on directly on top of the other one. So for this, we're gonna be using both the E6000 or similar, which I'm using the Gorilla Glue. So you're gonna go ahead and use both that and your hot glue. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you overlap the hot glue and the Gorilla Glue, it doesn't stick. So leave a space and do it kind of in between. You don't even have to use the hot glue. Um, it's more so just to hold everything in place while you know the E6000 or whatever is drying. So it's up to you. Okay, so now while that is kind of um, drying, it's coming together, guys. Can you see it's pretty cool? Even if you didn't wanna put the glass on, you can still use this as a cute little shelf thing. So what we're gonna do now is take our picture frame that we took everything out of. I removed the little tabs using pliers and we're going to be using the little hinges and attaching them first to this little frame and then to the box. The reason I am putting the hinges on before painting this is that the glue does not seem to stick as well to the painted surface. So I wanna really give it a good chance to hold since it's gonna be our door. So these little hinges I got from Home Depot and they were really inexpensive. There's four in here and we only need two. If Dollar Tree would have had little hinges, I would have gotten them, but they didn't. So what you're gonna do is place your frame on top of the other box that you just made. Now the frame is slightly, ever so slightly larger than our bottom frame, but that's okay. So if you want to have this just standing up, make sure that this frame, this is the bottom here, that this frame is flush on the bottom. If you are gonna be mounting this on the wall, then you can have it slightly sticking down, which is centering the frame on the box. Now, another option if you want to have it centered on the box, but you still want it standing up, is you can attach some type of little legs on the bottom. Line it up and then put your hinges in place. You wanna make sure that you put the hinges the right way so that they actually will open because I've done that before and I couldn't close my box. So make sure you put the hinge so that the little part that sticks up is facing upwards and then figure out where exactly you want to put them. It's hard for me to do this holding it up and showing you at the same time because you're gonna to wanna to have this flat on the table, but I'm just gonna show you and then I'll glue them in a second. I'll be using my E6000 as well as my hot glue. And I'm actually gonna put my dab of E6000 right in the middle and then put the hot glue so it's gonna sort of seep out the little holes of the hinge because I think it might help to hold it in place even a little bit better. So line it up on your frame and get it in place 
like that. And you can see that this hinge is still working so there's no glue on it. And go ahead and glue your other one in place. We'll be just gluing this on and then you can make sure before you actually glue it in place that your door will open and close. So now that I have my hinges on my frame, now is when I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. Then I will be attaching it to here. I'm not planning on painting these boxes, but right now I'm gonna go ahead and paint this frame. Okay, I'm waiting for my frame to dry. And what we're gonna do, I decided that the same way we were gonna make the knob for the door, I am going to make legs for my stand because I want my frame to be centered, the door frame, when it's opening and closing. So the way we're gonna do that, these little pony beads, I got them from Dollar Tree. You can find them there, they have them in different colors. You can find them in silver. And if you can't find them in silver, maybe you could spray paint them. And then these are the little crystal gems also from Dollar Tree. So I learned this technique from Helen on Beauty Meets DIY and I'll leave a link to her channel. She is awesome. What I learned from Helen is to take the back of the gem and add your little dot of glue and put it right into the center of that pony bead. Make sure that it's centered though because you want it to stand up straight. And this way it creates a little bit of like, for the handle, it creates the part to stick out, makes the little knob. And then for the feet, it ends up giving it something to glue to the base of our cabinet, as well as have a base to stand on the floor or the table or wherever you're putting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all five of those and have those ready. And so the next step, and probably one of the most important steps in this process, is to go and hit the like button and give me a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So this is my frame and it's painted and you see the hinges are on and the hinges got painted. I tried to kind of not paint the underside of the hinges. Um, when I spray painted the underside. So we have our little piece that we made like how we made the feet and I made a little handle at the same time. And we're gonna be gluing that on wherever you like it to be, higher, lower, whatever, onto your frame piece. And for that I'm gonna be using both E6000 and my hot glue to make sure it stays on well. And oops, probably what I should have done before I did that, I was getting a little ahead of myself, is go ahead and put the glass back into your frame here. I'll use that just to kind of keep it propped up. So here is my glass piece. You can see it's got a nice frosted look and that was using that frosted spray. I really like that. And what we're gonna be doing is putting it back in, not using the little tabs, because the tabs would show, but I'm just gonna use some of my E6000 and my hot glue and put it around that inside edge. I kinda like that shiny side out and the frosted side in, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna have to decide on that one. I don't think you're gonna need a whole lot of glue on this because you don't want it to seep out, but you do want it to hold that glass in place. Now you don't have to use hot glue um, if you don't want to. You can use just your E6000 and that should hold it perfectly. But I'm just going to use a couple dots of the hot glue just so that I can kind of make sure that it stays in place while the E6000 is drying. Okay, we're going to need to let that dry pretty well before we attach it onto our box. I'm gonna actually go in with my hot glue gun around this inner edge, even though I've glued it with the E6000, because I just wanna get that um, glass to stay holding in there. If you wanna do that, I think it's probably a good idea. It'll just give it a little extra added security. Um, here is how the box is looking. It's got the feet on it. Now, if you would like in this space around the, the two frames that we glued together, you can put, if you're going for more of a farmhouse look, you can do some of the nautical rope or the twine or maybe even do some, um, some kind of ribbon or whatever you think you would like. And if nothing, then nothing. I'm actually gonna leave mine blank. I contemplated putting some bling wrap on there to cover that seam, but I actually don't really mind the seam. I'm okay with it. So I'm just gonna leave it plain like that. Also, if you're going for the farmhouse version and you don't wanna use this, you could use the wood grain contact paper inside, then you can get that at Dollar Tree. This marble looking one I got from Walmart. 
So I also had another cool idea to do that mirror spray. So that it almost creates like a mirror. I don't know how that would look, or you could even do the one that looks like it's um, with the water droplets. So that's some fun ideas that you can try to sort of make it a little different. So the last thing I'm gonna do to finish this up here is we're gonna be attaching the door to the base, to our box. So just line it up, figure out exactly where you need it to be and then go ahead and add your glue. Again, you're gonna do the hot glue and your E6000 or similar adhesive. I'm gonna show you this all done, guys, in just a minute once I get this glued and it dries. Are you excited? I am! Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.